privilege of introducing to you Ambassador Sam Brownback. We cannot address the issue of human rights and religious freedom without mentioning Sam's incredible dedication, commitment, and work as 45th, 6th Governor of the Sunflower State of Kansas. And in his post-government career, serving as a leader, a global leader, to help bring freedom and dignity to the people of Iran. Until uh, January of 2021, he served as the United States Ambassador at Large for International Religion and Freedom at the State Department, and he served as U.S. Senator from Kansas for 15 years. During this time, he worked assiduously to protect Mrs. Rajavi from the French government when the French government negotiated with the Iranian regime while carrying out its destructive agenda regarding the Iranian resistance. I need not remind many of you that it was just a few years ago when, when the NCRA organized its worldwide meeting in Paris, the Iranians plotted to blow up that meeting. Tens of thousands of people would have been murdered and injured. It shows you how much the Iranian government considers the NCI a threat to its existence, to its very existence. And the French government, shall we say, did not show its best tricolor or three colors in consideration of the enormous challenge of apprehending those who were plotting and planning this terrible deed. So, Senator, Governor, we welcome you. Please join us up here. Thank you, Ambassador. Appreciate that very much. Pleasure to be back here and in the halls in the Senate and in the Kennedy Caucus Room. It's got such a special memory for so many people here. I've got one very direct, specific thought I would really like to leave with you of the moment we're in right now regarding Iran, the Middle East, and in really, indeed, peace throughout the world. It's not only now or never, it's now or nuclear is where we are facing the moment right now. And I want to develop that briefly for you. It's not only now or never, it's now or nuclear. Either we will see a different regime in Iran shortly, soon, or we will be facing a nuclear Iran. And they've learned the lessons from North Korea and the Kim regime that the way to hold the whole world off is to go nuclear. You've got to have the bomb. And once you have the bomb, everybody kind of backs off from you. They leave you alone. And we are now on the decision-making moment of what it will be like in the Middle East. Will you have a different, peaceful, democratic regime in Iran, or will you face a nuclearized, theocratic regime in Tehran whose theology supports the use of the bomb? They won't have a hesitancy to doing this based on their own theology, and this is a theocracy that we're facing. So one has to think in the terms of that. And this is critical. To the new incoming Trump administration, congratulations. Here's a hot potato. You got a big one in front of you. I applaud the maximum pressure campaign the first time around, which was quite effective. The second time around, it needs to be even more effective. The maximum pressure campaign needs to include all of the financial pieces to it, security, restraint, but it needs to add another component. It needs to have a political piece to it. It needs to be pushing and supporting the people on the ground in Iran and from around the world that are opposed to this regime and do so publicly and do so boldly and do so clearly. They need the support. And here, a lot of people say, okay, you know, now what are you really talking about with that? Uh, we are talking about we've got to have a different regime in Tehran or this will be a nuclear regime, which we 
really, then you're looking at decades of some sort of standoff and a really difficult situation. And I want people to think in their mind when they're looking at a changing regime, a regime change in Iran, not to, I want you to think about solidarity. And some of you, a lot of you aren't old enough to remember solidarity in the movement. You've read your history, though. You know that this was a key movement that opposed the regime in Poland, the communist regime in Poland, and the United States during the Reagan administration. And I've got my Reagan socks on. They've got, they supported solidarity. They supported Lech Walesa and the leadership that he gave at that point in time. They publicly, privately, they supported him in many different ways, that changing of regimes in Poland. We need to do the same thing this time around. We need to do it now, supporting the people like MEK, other groups that are opposed to this regime uh, in Iran. So. Stated clearly, the maximum pressure campaign 2.0 must include a political pressure component, supporting the protesters, calling for an end to the dictators in Tehran. Now, Tehran's going to go into survival mode now. They're going to start saying, okay, we'll negotiate, we'll talk with people, we'll do, we, 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 yeah, we want to talk about the nuclear weapons. They're going to go into survival mode at this point in time, and we cannot let them go there. We cannot accept it. They have done this previously. They always come back and then they get aggressive again and moving forward. We don't want them. And also, remember, the people of Iran don't want this regime. They don't support this regime. Just like the people in Syria didn't support Assad. They were threatened and they were terrorized into being mollified while they were there, but they didn't support the regime, and the people of Iran don't support them. They don't support the regime, the, the theocracy, the ruling mullahs. There will be no peace in the Middle East as long as this regime is in control. We know that. Thank you for being here for your decades of opposition to the theocracy. This is the moment to seize. It's not only now or never, it's now or nuclear. That's what we're facing. God bless you all.